A-League's Argo, the 19th A-League men's competition. This could save it. Wouldn't you know it? Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. The fairy tale is complete. The Central Coast Mariners, champions of Australia. Hello, I'm James Dodd, and welcome to the Isuzu Ute A League Highlights Show. We kick things off with a crucial rearranged fixture from round 13 as Western United hosted Adelaide United in Tarnit. Needing a win to keep their finals hopes alive, Adelaide United ventured to Melbourne's West in search of a win and a crucial three points, which would move them just three points behind the sixth place Western Sydney Wanderers heading into the penultimate round of the season. As for Western United, well, John Aloisi's side are looking to avenge their recent home loss to the Mariners at the weekend. A newer win over the Reds would see them move further clear of bottom side Perth Glory. Your match commentators in Tarn East are Phil Moss and Simon Hill. Kador. Nipping in and winning the ball back. Grimaldi feeding Wales. The cutback for Danzaki. Wanted a touch off the crossbar. So unlucky, Riku Danzaki. It was a great move by Weston. Almost rewarded. Cleaned up by Bovolina for Adelaide. Oh, that's risky from Delianov. Open goal. Couldn't miss. Matt Grimaldi. It's an awful moment for James Delianoff against his former employers. And Matt Grimaldi says thank you very much and opens the scoring for Western United. Well, this is not a Harvey Norman replay that Delianoff is going to want to put in his highlights package at all. Corner by Garuccio, flicked on by Danzaki, and James Donachy thrashes the ball into the corner, and Western double their money. A rare goal for James Donachy. Just his fifth in 181 games in the A-League. Numbers forward. Zach Clough with some space to advance into. Ibasuki. Iren Kunda gets there ahead of the goalkeeper. But the whistle has gone. I don't think there's a clear and obvious enough error for that to be overturned. But it's been overruled. Iren Kunda, chance to run at Garuccio and hit the byline, gets the cross in Ibasuki, couldn't finish. And nor could Zach Clough, and they're appealing for handball, Adelaide. Yeah, that's, I think that's the point of contact. But it's going to be a penalty. So it's Hiroshi Ibasuki. And he sends Hewitt Bell the wrong way, and Adelaide are back in the game. He's not only Western Sydney Wanderers have scored more. In comes the corner. Wallen meets it. Make that 10 goals from those particular set pieces. The tap in by Hiroshi Ibasuki. Sometimes it's done at your own expense. Good turn by Mork. Ibasuki. Nestor Yurikunda, is this the moment? You bet it is. Just another day, just another goal for Nestori Irakunda. You can't keep him out of the headlines. And Adelaide have turned it around. 2-0 down, now 3-2 up. This is a vital but slender lead that Adelaide hold. And this could be the last attack. Into the box it goes, and it drops here for Connor O'Toole. Extraordinary. Maybe with the last attack of the game, Western United somehow find an equaliser and Adelaide United's hearts are broken. A dramatic ending to the game in Tarnit as Conor O'Toole's 94th minute equaliser salvaging a point for Western while simultaneously putting a huge dent in Adelaide's push to secure finals football. Round 25 got underway at McDonald Jones Stadium where Newcastle Jets hosted Wellington Phoenix. With back-to-back -back wins under their belts, the Jets were looking to extend their unbeaten run in the league out to four matches, and with striker Apostolos Stamatolopoulos in excellent goal-scoring form, they fancied their chances of causing an upset. For Wellington, well, the task was simple. A win over the Jets would send them back to the top of the league with one game left to play in the regular season, whilst also piling the pressure on current league leaders Central Coast Mariners, who aren't in action this weekend due to travel issues on their return from Kyrgyzstan, 
following their midweek game in the AFC Cup. Your match commentators at McDonald Jones Stadium are Grace Gill and Simon Hill. Taylor. It's a good ball for Lockie Bayless who squares it up, it's got in off Alex Paulson. Lockie Bayless will claim it. And it was that little threaded ball from Clayton Taylor that did all the damage. And Lockie Bayless claims his first A-League goal. And the final touch was off the goalkeeper. Newcastle Jets leading 1-0. Now Mohamed Altay going to have a go. And it needed a really smart save at the near post from Ryan Scott to deny Mohamed Altay his first goal in the competition. Try over again. Sam Sutton can hit them, and it's a really good strike, and an excellent one-handed stop by Ryan Scott. And a bit of width here, Daniel Steins on the move, Stamatolopoulos in behind Scott Wooten, second chance, oh, off the crossbar from Apostolos Stamatolopoulos. Had to take it first time, that rebound, and just couldn't quite keep it down enough. Ben Old trying to find the angle for the cross, and he does so, and a great save by Ryan Scott to deny Costa Barbarousas. That's twice now he's had to be right at the top of his game. Here's a chance, Barbarousas and Old at the back post. Barbarousas surely, yes, now they've got it. And Costa Barbarousas has his 12th of the season and draws level with Shane Smeltz on 92 A-League goals. The joint fourth highest of all time, and those Knicks fans can finally celebrate after all that pressure. I can pick you apart, Wellington, on the counter. Here's Kryev, little dink, Barbarousas on side, off the woodwork. They were that close to taking the lead, Wellington Phoenix. Equalised through Barbarousas, hit the post twice. Here's Ben Ol to float one in. And it, was that a handball? Oh now they're going to have a look at this, I'm sure. Giancarlo Italiano is convinced. Oh, yeah, that's handball. Yeah, it has come off the left hand, and then Jenkinson's gone down really heavily on the ground. He's in a bit of grief with that shoulder, but the first point of contact, that left arm. It's on the shoulders of their skipper in the 96th minute. Alex Rufa, and he can't convert, it's the outside of the post. Absolutely extraordinary. And is that a kick that could cost Wellington Phoenix the premiership? A quite incredible end to proceedings at McDonald Jones Stadium as Wellington blow the chance to move three points clear in the race for the Premier's place after captain Alex Rufa missed his stoppage time penalty. Saturday's action began with a monster clash at Combank Stadium where the Western Sydney Wanderers hosted finals rivals Melbourne City. Sat a point clear of City with two games left to play in the regular season, the Wanderers knew a win for them would secure finals football for a second straight season under Marco Rodin, but a loss could be catastrophic. Should City leave Western Sydney with all three points, then they would be in pole position to seal the one remaining spot in this year's final series giving them a two-point buffer over the Wanderers with one game left to play. Your match commentators at Combank Stadium are Grace Gill and Robbie Thompson. Oh, that's poor. Picked off by Jakulic. Arslan with McLaren now. Early ball, first time for Jakulic. Brilliant football, but not the finish. He hasn't scored in 19 matches, Marin Jakulic, since that last goal against the Mariners as the sun breaks through at Combank. What can City provide here with Natal? Oh! What can they provide? Well, that's what they can provide. That is some finish from Leo Natal. No chance for Lawrence Thomas. And he's been in fine scoring form of late. Two last week against Perth this season in the win over Brisbane. Space here, Jakulic again, Ugarkovic continuing. Jakulic still going, and he's got the goal to make up for the miss earlier with a good old fashioned toe poke into the top corner. 
And that hammer blow has landed. 39 minutes in, and a deathly silence falls over Combank Stadium because it's City now leading the Wanderers by two goals to nil. A goal for the Wanderers would change the whole dynamic of this match. Brillante, is he to provide it? Well, it was a stinging effort palmed away by Jamie Young last week as well. So that concentration of goals has been climbing and climbing. The closer we get to finals football, 19 in all competitions. That's a great ball to the back post. And Marcus Yunus with his first ever A-League goal and one of hope. They were tears of sadness a week ago, tears of joy for him this afternoon. Ninkovic again with Yunus. Sapsford and Perias in the middle. Yunus goes for goal. Oh, Jamie Young just stood and watched. Marcelo is forward. Blair is there as well. In it comes. It's a good ball to the back post. Oh, it's miss hit. Tipped over. Well, it was there for the striking. And Dylan Perias just snatched at it onto the right foot. Ninkovic. Ninkovic still. Yunus now. Yunus off the crossbar. Well, the youngster. A monumental win for Melbourne City as they survived a late onslaught at Combank Stadium to leapfrog the Wanderers on the ladder with one game left to play this season. Join us after the break as we bring you another three games from the Isuzu Ute A-League, including a dramatic clash between MacArthur FC and Sydney FC. Welcome back to the Isuzu Ute A-League Highlight Show. Next up, we head to Amy Park, where Melbourne Victory faced off against Brisbane Raw. Despite suffering an agonising 1-0 loss to Wellington last time out, Tony Popovich's team came into the game knowing a win against the Raw would be enough to see them lock up third spot on the ladder and therefore earn the right to host an elimination final against the team that finishes in sixth place. As for Brisbane, well, City's win over the Wanderers earlier in the day meant their faint hopes of qualifying for the finals were now officially over. However, interim head coach Ruben Zadkovic would be hoping to secure a fourth win since taking charge of the club as he looks to boost his application to take the head coaching position on a full-time basis. Your commentary team at Amy Park are Daniel McBreen and Glenn Lauder. Great, all right. Almost gave Brisbane more an invitation in and then that's a nice switch of play to Arzani who gets onto the right boot. He forces a good save out of Macklin Freak, but the danger isn't past. Falami looking for options. Now Miliusnic at the other end, starting to open up. Hey. Henry Hoare at the back post, his header slams into the post. It was almost an open goal. Falami with the last touch, heading it out for a corner. But that is a guilt-edged opportunity for Henry Hoare, and he knows it. Well, it was wonderful work from Milo Uznitz, and look at Henry Hoare, he's got the, almost the whole goal to pick. Where do you want to put it? Kamulka again with space in the middle, can't control that under pressure. Now Corey Brown looks to get the ball towards the penalty spot. Kamulka tries to bring it down. Henry Hoare now. Plenty of Brisbane players for him, Berenguer. And now Corey Brown again cuts towards the back post and almost put in his own net by Adama Traore. Once again towards that back post, and it bobbles in front of goal. Miller Ustnich tries to get a touch on it. Kai Truen with a follow-up. It goes wide of the post, and that is a massive opportunity for Brisbane Raw. And look at Roderick Miranda firing up at his defensive unit. And Traore to his left. Traore with the first time ball towards the back post, and it's Bonaroli blocked on its way through. A frenetic start to this second half. Chances at both ends. And Bruno Fornaroli is denied by a desperate Brisbane defensive line as Jason Garrier will see the attention from Jack Morgan. I think he's in trouble here. See there. Jack Morgan rescinds the yellow, goes to the left pocket, and Jason Garrier knew that his afternoon was over. Azani takes on Brown but doesn't win the battle. 
Now Henry Hoare again. He could have had about four tonight. Here's Berenguer. Cuts back. Izzo with the touch. But now Henry Hoare does get the goal. It's been ruled out by Jack Morgan. But it's a good decision. It is a great decision. Uh, invitation and Lofthouse was left a little frustrated. Now Brown's ball towards the back post and Miller Yusnich forces an amazing save from Paul Izzo. Incredible. Well, Harvey Norman replay will show that back post area again is the danger for victory. It's Traore. Towards the back post, Bruno Fornaroli's waiting for a time to take touches. Still going Bruno Fornaroli. Macklin Freak does really well to get to his feet and get his hand on the ball and scramble it clear somehow Brisbane Raw. So 10-man victory survive a second half Brisbane onslaught to record their 12th draw of the season an inch ever closer to securing third spot on the ladder. Saturday's action came to a head at Campbelltown Sports Stadium where MacArthur FC hosted top four rival Sydney FC. Sat fifth on the ladder, the Bulls knew a win over the Sky Blues would see them jump into fourth on the table and move one step closer to securing a home elimination final with one game left to play in the season. Meanwhile, Sydney arrived in Campbelltown still on a high off the back of their dramatic Sydney derby win over the Wanderers, and they knew they could wrap up a top four finish with victory against the Bulls. Your match commentators for this one are Andy Harper and Simon Hill. Turned it around the corner for Lolly, but his technique just let him down. Most unlike Anthony Caceres, normally one of the most assured players on the ball. Meantime, the Bulls are away here. Jed Drew getting clear of Hayden Matthews. Rosen and Mombwa. Waiting in the middle, here is Charles Mobois. Big chance for the Bulls. Big. Pouched by Andrew Redmayne. Big chance. A beautiful football too. I fancy uh, a metre either side of Andrew Redmayne. He might have been beaten now. Joe Lolly is down for Sydney. And Clayton Lewis is down for MacArthur. Let's see what they make of this. I've got no problem with a foul or even a yellow, but I'm not sure it's a red. It's got to stay with the on-field decision. No, he's going to be off. Goodness me. That's ridiculous. I couldn't disagree with that more, so it's just ridiculous. Germain. Oh, that's a lovely ball from Valère Germain. Jed Drew is in behind. Oh, it's a tame shot, but Redmayne couldn't hang on to it. And Jed Drew opens the scoring for the 10 men at the second attempt. In first half stoppage time. And it's just his second of the season. Long-range shot, and when it's Luke Bratton, who really should score more goals with that beautiful right foot of his, it, it should be a better option. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. King, Burgess telling his teammate to hold up. Cross. It's then off the chest of Walter Scott. Now, there's a problem with Fabio Gomez here. It's going to be a red card, I fancy. Yellow is... Withdrawn and red applied. And MacArthur are down to nine. Still chasing the game. Bratton. Little scoop over the top. Is this the moment? Joe Lolly. 1 1. That's potentially offside. Goodness me. A quite incredible victory for MacArthur as the Bulls cling on with nine men to defeat the Sky Blues and with it take a huge step towards securing a top four finish. And the final game of the round took place at HBF Park where bottom side Perth Glory faced off against Western United. Propping up the rest of the league, Perth find themselves a point behind Western on the ladder and knew this was their last chance to avoid this season's wooden spoon as a win for Western would see them move four points clear with one game left to go. However, Perth Glory captain Adam Taggart will be hoping to continue his fine form in front of goal, having scored 17 this season, leaving him second in the race for the Golden Boot. Your match commentators in Western Australia are Andy Harper and Robbie Thompson. There was real upward movement, as Jacob Burns told us in the pre-game show, that it looked as though it was a new dawn. Well, it's been a false dawn so far. Here goes Lockie Wales. Little ball rolling it brilliantly, and how about the finish? 
from Grimaldi. That's three in his last four now. And unfortunately, the defensive woes for Perth Glory have been highlighted just four minutes in. But it was a wonderful, wonderful individual touch to put that ball in the back of the net. That's a good ball. Katrumbus taking on Donachy. He's made space for the cross. Tag it! And there it is. Goal number 18 of a brilliant season from Adam Taggart. And he has pulled Perth Glory back level with a textbook header. And it's nothing less than they deserve after a disastrous start. Tomoki Imai inviting the challenge. And Taggart makes no mistake. Kolakowski with the assist and barely 90 seconds into the second half. Adam Taggart has his 19th of the campaign. And he can say thank you to Tomoki Imai as well. A key contributor in the Western United goal. That was scored by Grimaldi. He was an outstanding performer last year in the MPL. Oh, look out, here's Ruse with Danzaki. He shoots, oh, he arrows it into the bottom corner. It's an outstanding finish from Riku Danzaki. Scored three weeks ago in the 4-2 win over MacArthur, and he's got his second goal of the season here. Latchman again. Bypassing Colley for Daniel Benny, who gets it back from Colley. It's well played again. Oh, and Williams could probably have turned away from trouble there. Thurgate. That's a good ball for Wallaty. Who hits it into the back of the net. His first A-League goal in just his second ever appearance. And Danzaki was clinical. So was that from the youngster. And it's one of the kids. Oh, it's his Laval, his chance. And he takes it. And that is it now. The wooden spoon belongs to Perth Glory. There's the youngster, Oliver Laval. Who played some cup matches at the start of the season. Has had to bide his time in the A-League. But he's taken the opportunity here and it's another mistake at the back. Well, the season that has petered out, as you said earlier, Andy Harper, for this match, it's Perth season. Davy Williams, well, he's got his 50th this time, and no one's taking it away. And perhaps we are in stoppage time. Anything can yet happen. They're back to within a goal. There's just over three minutes left, and perhaps the horse has bolted but it would be typically Perth to let it all hang out in the final seconds of their home match this season. Well, as bad as some of the defensive play has been with and without the ball on the Harvey Norman replay, this is just the latest example. The finishing's been terrific. That's a really good hit from Davy Williams. So an absolute goal fest at HBF Park as Adam Taggart moves clear in the race for the golden boot. However, his double wasn't enough to prevent Perth from losing and therefore claiming this season's wooden spoon. That's all for this week on a bumper Isuzu Ute A-League highlight show. We'll see you next time.